You're watching Business Nigeria. The crypto market is saturated with thousands of cryptocurrencies that attempt to leave their mark on the blockchain industry. However, only some succeed in their quest, with others failing to make an impact and raising and to raise their market capitalizations. With the colossal collapse of crypto exchange FTX in recent weeks, excitement in the world of cryptocurrency and finance has been in no short supply, leading to a widespread loss of confidence in crypto markets. Despite the market downturn and the widespread negative sentiment in the industry in the wake of the FTX collapse on, on chain data still show reasons to be bullish on Bitcoin. Now, to give us more insight into these developments in the cryptocurrency market, I am now being joined live virtually from Delta State by a certified metaverse analyst and blockchain architect, Dominic Rume Riri. Thank you very much for joining us at this point. What is happening to the crypto market today? Over the past several weeks, many have complained about the fact that it has crashed totally. Trading activities in the crypto markets globally at this time is not a cheerful. It's not cheerful. Going by the ongoing crisis in the industry, um, the industry has been faced with in recent weeks. What is happening, Dominic? <laughs> so a lot of Nigerians actually, with cryptocurrency, blockchain technology, it seems like the devil has actually put on net clothing to come and attack them. Well, but the we, we, we blame major them. Issue here is. <laughs> <laughs> the major issue here is the fact that we have, you know, when people who have actually put so much faith in centralized authority and we've started going back from the original idea of decentralization of cryptocurrency or blockchain, you see, when people idolize a couple of people and then there are no checks and balances to be able to ensure that people, um, these people, or the power that they have is checked, we'll have these kind of things. Happening. And then you see this particular type of idolization, like calling somebody like the FTX guy that just crashed that particular second biggest exchange. We see that some people blindly follow and mm -hmm. they negate the importance of education, which actually is the building block and first investment into this particular type of technologies. And that's actually the reason why we are always advocating here at Vern Nigeria that we should always be first keyed into particular words, education. And this is actually the reason they've neglected decentralized finance and focused on centralized finance. Well, we are, I'm, I'm aware that this, hap this crash happened uh, at, at a point in 2008. It's a financial crisis scenario, and it, um, it showed the uncertainty within the industry. Do you think many people will still want to go into crypto cryptocurrencies and uh, blockchain? With, in the past few months, actually, with the uncertainties that have actually hit the market, are mm -hmm. we talking about the Terry AC or the Celsius Sega that happened with the Terra Luna where people saw, Terra Luna was currently trading, was trading that time at about, let's say, hundred and something dollars. Terra Luna is possibly trading right now at 0, 0.00 something dollars. Wow, wow. And you can see that that is a lot of money that has actually left the market. And wow. what happened is because a lot of people we are using tokens to back, we are using volatile asset to back this particular type of tokens. How can you use a volatile asset to be able to back your, your tokens? You see, that happened with Terra Luna. It also happened with FTX, which is the second mm -hmm. use case. And you can see that that has also extended to the DGC, which is the digital currency group that has been headed by Gary Silbert. And currently, you can see that backing of so they float a token into the market and say okay this token that they are floating into the market i want to give you ten thousand dollars worth of that token is there ten thousand dollars assets or mm -hmm. ten thousand dollars worth of business use case for that particular token that's happening so when you check those particular balances and you see that here you are just having floated tokens that are just programmed and you are not having um proportionate balance for real assets in the other side then you have this kind of alarm set off and things like this start happening in the market. Regardless, there is hope. Because okay. when I started before, I said we, there is a lot of education that is needed. And that's the reason why we need to re-emphasize why decentralized finance is actually needed to be able to see that things like this stop happening. Let's take, for example, a 
an exchange instead of FTX or maybe the Terra Luna type of cryptocurrency. Let's take, for example, a cryptocurrency like Uniswap, which is a decentralized finance type of cryptocurrency, or a crypto or an exchange like Uniswap. People go there, they are able to practice the first law of cryptocurrency, which is my keys, my funds. So let's say they deposit their money into it. Their money is not with any centralized authority. Their money is still with them. They can use any of the Ethereum virtual machine wallet to be able to assess their money. Let's say an alarm sets off that something is about to happen. All they would have needed to do is to maybe break their money out of that particular Uniswap protocol or the decentralized mm. finance protocol. And quickly, is that instead of them to lose all their money, maybe they would have lost just 12% of it. The reason why people are actually going into decentralized finance is not because, okay, we have traditional finance normally that people run to, which is centralized. But with decentralized finance, you can see reduced fees, you can see transparency, mm. which means that somebody actually checks this particular decentralized, they were trying to attain a level of decentralized finance, and somebody went to check their ledger balance on the blockchain and saw that it does not match. And because of decentralized finance, you can see what has happened with what. Um, FTX. So it's actually cause for us to now see that, okay, decentralized finance also has things like automation with it, which happens with smart contracts. And with things like automation in it, you can see, okay, let's say, well, let's apply it to Nigeria now, for example. Let's take, for example, like the last Naira notes that just happened. Mm. A lot of the decisions that were made, that were made, were made based on central authorities, and they just recolor the Naira notes. You can have something like a DAO working in decentralized finance. A DAO means decentralized autonomous organization. And you have a set of people voting on a particular consensus, which means that for any action to happen, they would need to pass that particular vote on decentralized finance. So you would have had a situation where Nigeria would have actually had um, a say on what they are actually doing with the Naira, whether they should recolor it to blue, brown, or maybe should actually reduce some of the zeros with it. And you can also see that this type of vote and decision making process we do not own in our ecosystem. Well, Dominic, now in, in clear terms, can you um, do you see do you in any way see the ongoing um, <coughs> excuse me, do you in any way see the ongoing crypto crisis uh, having any significant impact on the entire fintech space? Currently, it's having a negative impact in mm. terms of credibility, especially with some of the people that were novice that got into it and were promoting blindly. They were marketing. And that actually is the reason that reaffirms education. That, as a negative impact as it seems, actually is a very good thing because the bad actors <coughs> have been shaken out of the industry. What we have now in the industry is the people that are actually building. We have people that are building, people that are actually looking out for better automation, better transparency. Right now, we're having currency reserves. We're having things like we're having to be able to see exchanges. We see the currency reserve they, ha they have. And that was not there before this particular crisis happen. So it has actually made the industry to be stronger, it has actually added some new iteration processes for investors to make smarter decisions. And that's the reason, again, why we're actually now advocating again for what? For decentralized finance and saying, okay, much more people can actually get more educated using decentralized ledger technologies instead of what centralized technologies. Well, taking inspiration from the fallout of the 2008 Great Depression, can the crypto market recover as the traditional financial market did post-crisis? Apologies. Come again. I didn't hear you. I was asking that uh, despite... Um, we're taking inspiration from the fallout of the 2008 Great Depression. Can the crypto market recover as the traditional uh, financial market? <laughs> Actually, the crypto market would be recovering much more faster than the traditional finance markets. You see, except we are receding back in time, technology is here to stay. Centralized finance is going and decentralized finance is coming in. And um, because one of the things that it does is the fact that it increases trust, especially because the major problem of man is trust. You can see that even with majority of the times that the first use case of blockchain 
mm. has actually been um that's bitcoin has come down which is the currency you can see that it has actually re recovered way much more faster than what than every other um asset in the mm. world so going forward you see much more people using digital technology just like we are evolving with the internet two years ago we could we possibly would not be having this type of interview this kind of knowledge sharing um session across the world from the comfort of my studio here and you can see you too you're able to do it across anywhere in the globe and you can see this iteration that has happened a lot of people it just depends on the bad actors that are attached to a particular technology we are using it for good there are people that would always develop the technology which yeah. is blocking True. because the thing is this that particular question was asked with a one with a single story just like she amanda Adiche would say with a single story the single story of having just cryptocurrency in mind what if you want to use cryptocurrency to be able to develop media i want to say okay want to build more media houses in this particular region of the world. We want to be able to see that we expand media facilities, media partners. We can be able to use blockchain as a technology as open crowd funding projects for this particular world type of thing. So the industry is actually going to evolve. And there's actually, it's actually a good thing for Africa because there's, good, there's a flipping now. Before now, cryptocurrency users here in Nigeria, we're investing into a lot of cryptocurrency projects over there. Right now, what will happen is that we will see a flip. A lot of the people over there, if we can tell a story of African projects that needs attention, we can have this funding coming in. Let's say we want to solve the problem of health, cancer, breast cancer women here that don't have health facilities. We create NFT projects, 500 NFT projects, tell a story around it. Say we want to solve the problem of that build that facility. That money that is raised will be used to build the facility, generate cash flow from the facility. The value of those NFTs, cryptocurrencies go up in value, and utility is actually provided from those particular cryptocurrencies. Uh, things it seems we're having some network difficulties with. Um, Dominic, of course, it's a very interesting interaction talking about uh, analyzing performance of the crypto market in the, this, um, uh, I mean, the collapse of the FTX. And of course, Dominic Curry, an expert, has been talking to us on this development. Of course, we will take a break at this point, And when we return, hopefully, we will have Dominic back. Stay tuned. Large in Business Nigeria, of course, we were talking to a uh, certified metaverse analyst and blockchain architect, Dominic Rumerure, and he's joined, he's joined us now. Of course, we had some network crisis, but he's with us here at this point. Now, Dominic, crypto is quite risky. It's a risky investment, and that's what everybody knows as with other businesses, and that's why the call for regulation is still an ongoing conversation across local and international forum with the crisis in the market. Now, with this crisis in the market, do you foresee any move by global monetary authorities taking the bull by the horn to legalize its transactions? Yes, with a question that I actually answered a few weeks ago in a conference. Every, every investor wants to understand and know the security of his investment. Mm. So, Ideally, Nigeria has actually gone ahead to be able to take a leading position, especially with regulation in cryptocurrency. Before now, we had the SEC come out that you need about a, a roughly about a million dollars to be able to regulate yourself as an exchange, especially when you want to deal with cryptocurrencies here in Nigeria. You need 300,000 for registration, you need 100,000 for reform, you need 30 million to process something, and then you need 500 million as bond. Mm. Now, with this particular type of thing across other countries, we can see that actors that want to be fraudulent and know that they've already kept some money as bonds and know that their money would actually still be held back. They would not be fraudulent again like this. So we've seen actually in the last two weeks, in the last one week, the US government, the ones in the Bahamas, the so many of the authorities actually have been interested in scaling up what they have, especially with their regulatory policies with cryptocurrencies. It's not far-fetched for getting the best framework right now with cryptocurrency regulation, and we'll get it right. That's the reason why, like I reiterated again, 
we need much more people to come into this space. You can become a blockchain lawyer. You can become a blockchain analyst. You can become a blockchain. So like this particular type of media we're doing now is media for the blockchain space, basically. And that's to be able to educate much more of your people about what is happening in this particular niche market. There's people that can get in as writers, copywriters, journalists. People can get in as host events, um, blockchain events presenters. And you can see these different sectors of this um, technology will grow. How to make money from these different sectors will grow, which are also not related with, to cryptocurrencies. If you want to even use it, let's say, solve education. With blockchain as a technology, and you want to solve the problem of education. I mean, I gave an example earlier where you saw that we used about some amount of money to recolor the e naira and print it. We used 58.8 billion to print e naira and to print 2.5 billion naira. That was a deficit of like 55 billion. We can channel that into possibly like a strike and be able to clear that off the market. Mm. And you can see that they can actually now channel, you can see that they channel that again into blockchain projects to see that, okay, this development continues to what to take place. And you can see instead of us using physical era, using block e era now, pushing it on the blockchain, that is a development skill. We no longer need to print this physical note. And then we can have everything working smooth, perfectly, and efficiently. Well, before I let you go, Dominic, um, coming on home, Nigeria is recorded 11th position in the top 30 countries in chain analysis global uh, crypto adoption index now with the losses that has been recorded in the market do you think nigeria is still optimistic about trading on crypto and can crypto be considered a uh, digital assets in this country currently crypto can't do you say do you say digital assets or illegal assets digital assets Okay, crypto is always a digital asset. Crypto is the digital asset. The best digital asset is Bitcoin. You see, this is it. For clarity, blockchain is a technology that enables cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is just on the blockchain. Bitcoin is one of the first cryptocurrencies. So this digital asset range will continue to happen because with Bitcoin, it has proven itself to be resistant to be um, one of the most sound currency on mm. planet Earth. Mm. It is sound money. It is money that cannot be resisted by states. It is non-state money. It is the money for the people. So definitely, it, is, it will always be a legal asset, and it will always be determined by the factors of demand and supply, just like with currency. Currency always fluctuates. The US dollar actually appreciated by 12% against a lot of crypto, against a lot of global currencies, and it saw even the Naira depreciate. So it is, no, it is no difference with digital currencies. There will always be fluctuation in the market. And you okay. must always see that the bitcoins you are buying as digital assets will go up or come down, but it will always remain digital assets. A quick yes or no. Do you think um, Nigerians will still be optimistic about trading in crypto? Yes or no, despite the, 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 the crash recently? <laughs> you know... Uh, yes or no? <laughs> yes or no, yes or no, we need to go. Yes, yes, we are optimistic. Yes, we are optimistic. The okay. reason is because we've made okay. more gains than we've lost in this particular market. All right. Uh, certified Metaverse Analyst and Blockchain Architect, Dominic Rumerire, thank you so much for talking to us.